All right, foot number one. This little dog is an idiot. It's not the word I want to use, but it's the word we're going to use. And I'm putting my mask back on. So anyway, we have no way to do his toenails at all because he will bite you. I've already tried and I have given up. So this is the way I do front legs on a shaved down Yorkie or any dog for that matter. I come straight down the foot. And I know that some of you don't do that. I actually have the wrong blade on there. Oopsie, you just got to see a mistake. It's okay, he was really mad at it, it'll be all right. His dad was expecting him to be much shorter than he is. But anyway, I come straight down the foot, just like this, and down the inside of the legs as well. I've done everything to write about here just to show you how I handle this. And I hold legs ten mostly like this because I have found that the more you hold, the worse they fight you. And you'll notice I'm coming, when I get to the foot, I come straight off, literally just straight off the foot. I'm going to do the same thing on the back feet. And again, he's not the nicest dog to work on, so I'm being uber careful. I actually had to chase him around my backyard with a towel and a lead to catch him today. And notice how I do this. I lock the leg in place and then come straight down the foot. I do that on every dog because it allows me to control them a little bit better. Most dogs keep their other foot on the table, however. Okay, and we're done with the leg, with the clipper work. I hold the leg, trying to get it where you can see it. Let me move the camera. That's a little better. On him, because of how he's behaving, I'm going to turn my curved scissor backwards and scissor the pads. And then I'm going to turn my scissor this way. Flip it around, because it has got, these are flippers. They've got the ability to be flipped around and still be in control. And I really wish I could cut his nails, but every time I try, he tries to eat me. And then I'm going to round the top. Now again, he is a shave down. But you asked to see how I do feet. This is how we do feet. Then I'm going to take my thinners, my blenders, and just soften up my edges. Looking for a brush. Everything I have is in a sanitizer right now. And I'll just have to use the one I don't want to use, but this is okay. Everything I have is in one of the UV sanitizers. Then I'll brush them up, take my blenders again, and just smooth out the top of the foot. That's a back foot. And the thing is, it's nice and tight, and it won't attract a lot of dirt out in the yard or wherever this dog lives. This dog was in really bad shape when he came in. And we're going to show you again on this one. I pick the foot up. You'll notice I am really not holding this dog's foot. I, it's just sort of sitting in my hand. Again, the more you fight them, the harder it is. I'm going to do both feet. Maybe you can see the other one when I get to it. Again, though, curved up, scissor pads flush. I'm going to raise them up. Take my thinners or my blenders, whichever you want to call them. Go across the top of that foot. Ah, ah, ah. Don't you bite me. Don't you do it. Round it off. Easier if the nails are done. Now, I do tend to do nails after I'm done, and the reason is this foot right here will look really, really pretty with those nails done if I could get the nails done. You see the difference between the two feet? How nice and tight this one is versus that one? And remember, he had a couple of mats in his feet, too. So let's see if there's a way to show you this one better. Turn this way. Okay. Yep, I can do this. I like to hold them like this when I'm doing pads. It's really hard to do this in school if you see what I'm doing. But anyway, we're going to bend it backwards, just slightly turned out, but it's not going to hurt him. It doesn't hurt. Curve scissors up. Trim the pads. Round it this way where you can see what you're doing. While I'm at it, I'm going to get that little bit of hair up there. 
that apparently I missed. I tried to keep the legs at a decent angle. It can be hard and still get a video. So. Sometimes I'm holding things differently in video than I would normally hold them. But we do that. Take the blenders. Round off the feet. Turn around. I've already brushed this one up so there's not much to do. Brush it back up and down. And then that makes sure that you've got the shape that you're after. Okay, one more foot. And you can see this one, this one's a little easier to hold. I think you can see what I'm doing. Uh, maybe not. There we go, that's better. Scissor out the pads or off the pads. You can also clipper them. He's really sensitive to the clippers. And he and I have been on this table for like an hour right now because he was on the table for a long time while I chiseled hair away because he was in such a mess. Not sure why he was in such a mess, but he was in a mess. And yes, he has some fleas. So if you just saw that flea, he does have fleas. They're dead, but he does have fleas. And again, I'm going to brush it up so that it is standing up. Blend the top of the foot in. And the reason I want to blend the top of the foot in is because then when you brush that hair to the sides, it doesn't hang off. As long as that foot is nice and tight, it'll be nice and neat when they go home and it'll stay that way longer. All right. There's your first foot of the day, and I will move on to whomever's next on my list, which I know that they're not a shave down, so it'll be a fluffier foot. Okay, I want to show you a little bit about a long-haired chihuahua um, or long-haired chihuahua mixes feet. They tend to get these little fuzzies right up in here, and while I've already done this foot, I am going to go back now that I've brushed it up and just blend the top of it a little more. And I'm going to show you how to do the other feet. Uh, uh, uh. She's a rescue. She has no idea what we're doing. She literally spent six months at the shelter, had never been groomed when he got her. And while she was scrawny then, she is definitely not scrawny now. I'm going to touch up this foot and then I will show you how I did these two front feet. thought these two were done, but like most chihuahuas, once you get into the, it becomes an issue. We're going to take a small clipper because I'm a big fan of the right clipper or the right size tool for the job. Like you wouldn't use a 10 inch knife, you don't want to use a 10 inch pair of scissors or a big clipper. And I'm going to just sort of skim over the top. I don't skim down in deep. We live in an area with lots of yeasty and lots of wet weather. So we try not to get down inside the pads unless there are actual mats. Comb that up and then Hold the foot up, round it with a curled pair of scissors, just like on the other foot I showed you. I'm gonna end it down. Stop. Valentine, come on, baby. I'm expecting a phone call from a client to take their pup out to them any minute, so if the phone rings, I'll have to stop, pick her up, and come back. But then I brush it up again, scissor it tight. And what you're going to notice, again, notice how I'm holding it. I'm not really putting a lot of pressure. Is that when I comb it back up, after I'm done, nothing falls to either side. See, I don't know if you can see that. But nothing goes off to the side at all. And before anybody asks, these are Jody Murphy thinners. Love, 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 love. These are used, old, love them, love them, love them. They hold an edge and they leave a fabulous finish. So see, and then on the front pad, you're gonna do something similar. I know you can't see what I'm doing exactly, but I just skim across the top with this little tight clipper. This is a mini figura. Push that back there. Hold the foot loosely. Let me move it a little closer. But you hold the foot, that'll probably work better. I like to hold my feet really loose in my hand because then the dogs don't bite you. If you're holding on like this and you're holding on and gripping hard, the dogs are going to pull away. So anyway, there we go with that. I'm going to take a curved pair of scissors. This is my Kenji 5 Star 6 inch, I think. Is it a 6 inch? Yep, it's a 6 inch. 
And I like little scissors for feet because you have more control. Again, you wouldn't want to use, for example, this around this little foot. I mean, you could, but you have so much scissor that's not being used. It's just, it's, it's kind of crazy. And I know people who do it. I had a girl who used to use every single pair of shears she used was a nine or 10 inch pair and she didn't own anything any different. Now for the back of the legs, yes, I'm using a longer shear. But she used that nine or 10 inch pair for everything. And again, comb it up. She used to make me cringe around ears or faces. I was like, no, don't do that, you're scaring me. But again, notice I'm not holding her foot real tight. I'm allowing her to just rest it in my hand. Round it off. And then when you comb it to the side, nothing falls over and everything is nice and tight. Okay. I think the people who have the most trouble with feet and legs are seriously the ones that are holding on for dear life and putting too much pressure then the dogs will fight you. If you don't hold too tight and don't put a lot of pressure, the dogs won't fight you as bad. When they don't fight you as bad, you can get a better foot. Okay? I'll be back. Okay, we've been talking about feet on shorter dogs, shorter body, and he has a little more hair, as you can see. So I wanted to show you how I do these. Um, it's not that easy on him. He's got a bad back knee. In fact, I think he has two bad back knees. So I'm trying to be real careful. And the dog that I just did belongs with him. So anyway, same clipper as always. Hang on one second. Let me do this. Alexa, turn off outside camera. Turn off is not supported currently. Cancel. But you can ask to hide Alexa, the camera. Alexa, cancel. Try Alexa, go to the home screen. Keep forgetting what she can and cannot do. That's my outside camera showing up on my Alexa so I can look at the outside kennels, but there's nobody in there, so I don't need to have it on. I put the dogs outside about two minutes before their owners get here, and then I can watch them through there. Anyway, same thing on him we did on the last one. Just skim across the top of the pads, and I know that this is hard to see. It's really hard to see feet. When I do it, I tend to come across from the nails up into the pads as well and get all of that hair right off the inside there. That keeps much of the hair off of the, or much of the dirt off of the hair. They don't drag it in as easily. Let's see if we can move this camera back around here. I keep forgetting to, if I move the camera right here, it's easier for you to see. So, bend very carefully and I scoop across the top and again, notice I'm right against the edge of the pad, and I'm going to get all of that stuff right there. That just tightens up that entire area. Now on the back foot, I'm going to use my little comb and do that. Because I do want to leave the foot a little fuller because the dog has more hair. Of course, I'm not going super tight but it is the same shape. And again, notice I'm not really holding his foot tight. I'm simply letting it rest in my hand. And then I'm going to put it down on the table. Sit in my heat box, which means they're gonna to be too hot for you. I forgot they were in the heat box. And then just edge them with my blenders. Don't like the shape. I'm gonna go back and shape up just a smidge there. I always get the bottom tight. I like to call up my beveled edge like you would on a copper bevel. And then try not to pinch it, but he's got really funky shaped feet, so there's gonna be a sharp point. But you see how nice that is? and it's up off the table, that means it's not gonna be sitting on the ground when he goes outside. He's not gonna be dragging in as much stuff. And then on the front foot, I hold it backwards this way in my hand. And we're gonna do the same shape. I 
again, he's got almost, and I'll show you the bottom of his feet. His feet are almost triangular. So I'm trying to build round, but you're not necessarily always going to get round. The only real way, see his feet are really very triangular shaped. I'm trying to get it where you can see. There we go. They're very pointy in the middle. You, the only way you can get a really round foot that way is to do it completely on the table. And most dogs are not going to be still enough. Most pet dogs are not going to be still enough for you to be able to accomplish that on the table. Stop. Get your head up, Otis. Thank you. So we're going to go boom, boom, boom. Shape it, shape it, shape it. And there we go. See how pretty? And it doesn't take very long. He's got really, really dense undercoat. I'm not familiar with this breed to know if it's normal for them or not. But remember, he's not a party color dorky. He is a beaver terrier. And I know that other people say beaver and some say beaver. Whatever he is, that's what he is. He's not a party dorky. He is literally one of the more expensive terriers. He's the only one I groom, and I adore him. He's a sweetheart. He was actually get sold to her as a pet when he developed back knee problems, and she opted not to show him. I think he's oversized, but I don't know enough about the breed to know that. He's really sweet. I do know that. And his mama is a doll. I adore her. So... I'm going to round this foot off because I can't get it at an angle that I want. This is another way you can do it. You can do it from the front, just like that, like I just did, where you shape it that way. Then I turn it ever so slightly and get the back. It really depends because certain feet are harder for me than others, so it's going to depend on which foot I'm working on as well, how I hold the foot. Some of them I hold one way, some I hold another, some dogs I hold one way, some dogs I hold another. It really will depend upon all of what you're doing. How the dog is behaving, how short the nails are, blah, blah, blah. All of that changes up. Right now, because I'm holding his face, he will sit his foot on the table for me to be able to finish. And there we go. Here's another foot. When I stand him up, I'm gonna look at the back of it. And I don't like the way the back looks. So we're going to hold him up and get right back there. He is growing out from a shave down. So we're dealing with some matting currently and some uneven feet and some weird shaped body, but it'll get there. It'll get there. And all right, last foot. And again, because every single foot you have to hold differently depending on the position of their body and yours and the connection, you just have to play it by ear and adjust your hold to their body, adjust the position to the dog. And it'll all work out for you. But this is actually super easy. He comes every two weeks. So I'm basically maintaining. He was here two weeks ago today. So I'm just maintaining what I did two weeks ago, neatening up, keeping it off the ground so he doesn't drag stuff in. And there you go. Well, you can't quite see that. Let me raise it up a smidge. Maybe, if I can hit the button. There we go. And when you look in the camera and you see hair like that, then you know that you can take your scissors, whoops, and fix it again. I'm gonna raise it up where I could actually see what I was doing at help too. But see, we have beautifully stacked, nice feet that are up off the table, and it's not that hard to do. Good deal. I'll be back.